Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today is the last uh, lecture of our mini course here on a more rigorous approach to thermodynamics. We're going to bring in another mathematical idea today, uh, homogeneous functions, and then an associated theorem called Euler's theorem. All right, so let's just start with a definition. A homogeneous function is one in which if you multiply the variables by some number, right, lambda, so lambda is some number, it's not some function, it's some number, then that function is lambda to the k f, the, the original function. And the k is the degree of the homogeneity. So for example, uh, let's use this function here. This is one we used on the first day in the first lecture. Let's use that again here. So our function is x squared minus 2xy plus x uh, plus y squared. So now we're going to take and take the function of lambda x, lambda y. So it'll be lambda x squared. And then each one of these will get a lambda x and a lambda y there. And then a lambda y squared. So this term becomes lambda squared x squared. This becomes 2 lambda squared xy. And then this becomes lambda squared uh, y squared. There's a common lambda squared in each which we can pull out. And then what we have left is in fact f of x and y, the original function. So we get something of the form lambda squared f of x. So here we would say k is equal to 2, and we would say this is a homogeneous function of degree 2. All right, well, stemming out of the axioms that we talked about on uh, the first day, the lecture zero, the introduction to the course, where we talked about what was the level of rigor here in this course, uh, we said that the extensive properties are linear functions of the amount of material. And so that parlays itself in this language to of degree one, and then uh, homogeneous functions of degree one. And then the intensive variables are independent of the amount of material. So they're going to be homo homogeneous functions of degree zero. So these are, so we're going to take this, we're not going to prove this. We're going to take that as stemming straight from our axiom about the linear dependence of the uh, extensive functions. Now we're going to state a theorem that we're not going to prove. Um, this is called Euler's theorem. And so we're not going to do the mathematical proof for that. We're just going to, we're going to take this. Uh, if we have a homogeneous function of degree k, then, then, interestingly, k times our function is equal to this. Um, this, is, this looks like a differential form, but it's not. There's no d's anywhere. So that's very interesting. Uh, it's got that, it's the sum of the partial derivatives times the variable itself, not d variable. So it looks a lot like, like I said there, it looks a lot like a um, differential form, but it's, it's not. Let's look at an example here. So let's take this same function and let's, let's calculate these partial derivatives. So here's df dx, so a 2 will come down, minus 2y, so 2x minus 2y, then df dy, we're going to get a minus 2x and a plus 2y. We get that. So let's put this in the form of Euler's theorem, the right-hand side of Euler's theorem. So we're going to take our df dx times x, df dy times y, and we get 2x squared minus 2xy, and then this distributes through to give us minus 2xy, 2y squared. So these two will combine together to be minus 4xy. There's, with that, we have got a common factor of 2, and so we have 2 times this, which is 2f. So this is matching the left-hand side 
of Euler's theorem, which says that we should be k times f, and we found out earlier that k was 2. So that is an example of Euler's theorem playing itself out. Okay, well, let's uh, get back to thermodynamics, talk about internal energy, U, and what we're going to do is derive that important equation that we've, that's sort of been the central player in this whole um, short mini course. So I'm going to write um, U in front of its, in terms of its natural variables, S, V, and N, and so I'm just going to write out the differential form. So this is a differ differential form now. Um, ds dv whoop. make sure that's a differential form dn and i'm gonna as i've talked about a few times in some of the earlier lectures sort of label this as a, a just as a purely math expression this is this could be anything any function this is just writing out the differential form then we're going to connect that to the physics. So, so much in thermodynamics is write something from a mathematics perspective, connect it with what it means physically, and then you generate a whole bunch of equations. And so, let's just write out du, what it is, from the first law. So, this is just the first law in terms of state functions. So, it's the first law. First law in terms of state functions. So this is this, this is that, and that's that. So du ds is t, du dv is minus p, and du dn is chemical potential. So now let's apply Euler's theorem. And so we'll do the right hand side du ds s, so not a differential form now. This is not the differential form. Du ds s, du dv v, uh, du dn n. Well, what are each of these? T s minus p v plus chemical potential times the corresponding um, number of moles. And so there's our equation. There's the one we've been using quite a bit. And so that's a good point to stop this mini series. So um, I hope you were able to get some ideas about how to think about some of these, these things that we just take um, that are just told to us in general chemistry. And then some of the things we gloss over when we take a course in either uh, thermal physics or um, um, physical chemistry. And so uh, as you, I'm sure were, was impressed upon you in physical chemistry, thermodynamics is really well, well grounded in rigorous theory. And we could have gone deeper even, um, prove things like Euler's theorem, and even uh, talk a little bit more deeply about um, the idea of how these uh, fundamental functions, such as internal energy and um, entropy, uh, arise from the physical, the connection to the physical. But at the end of the day, we can't take it all the way down to something like geometry or number theory where you can just axiomatically work this out without any outside connection to nature. Nature has to come in in the form of, in this case, conservation of energy, uh, and, then, uh, and then the definition of entropy. And that served as the basis for our rigor. So everything fell from there. And so um, what we've talked about here then is, is bedded on the foundation of how much we believe in conservation of energy, which of course is thoroughly established, and the concept of entropy, which is also thoroughly established.